Now faith is the victory. You, you had the testimony of our brother, and we shall close with this scripture. Let us turn to one John, third chapter. And the eighth verse, one John, third chapter, and the eighth verse. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, Dr. Job was telling us some of these works, the very disruptive nature of some of these works of the devil, and how when he humbled himself we saw faith to be the victory. Yes, we must see more of these works of God. For he was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Unfortunately, today, the big battleground is not somewhere else. It's right in the home. You know, I often tell everybody, including my wife, you know, I can't understand how people can survive while they are fighting with each other in the home. How can you imagine a situation where there are arguments and fights in the family? See, as after 47 years of marriage, since the Lord has been so good to us, no arguments, no fights, nothing. It's hard to imagine how people survive in a situation where there is fighting, bitterness, anger. I think I've told you this before. There was one occasion only one occasion when I started only saying monosyllabic words. You know what that is. Yes or no. That's all. That's all the speech to which I was confined. In just a matter of two hours, in 47 years of marriage, two hours, suddenly everything went dark in the family. I can't even rec recall what was the cause for me to be upset. Of course, I confess, as I always do, that I'm extremely foolish. Uh, but I can't understand uh, what had upset me. Some simple, silly thing, evidently, since I can't even recall what it was. But the net result it seemed like all the devils had gotten into our family, into the home. And I was not accustomed to anything like that. 
I was not used to my peace being disturbed. Great peace have they that love your law, and nothing shall offend them. See, that was the environment in which I used to live. Nothing to disturb the peace in the heart. I said, this simply cannot do. So I said, I'm sorry, Lily. You know? And that was the end of the problem. Light and peace and joy came right back again. So, just think of that. He was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Let me tell you, I couldn't endure it for two hours. I don't know how people endure it for long, long periods. I simply don't know. They must be much stronger than Goliath. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. But I simply couldn't endure it for even two hours. That was the limit of that monosyllabic speech. You can never accuse me of monosyllabic speech uh, at any other time in my life. So, the devil tries to make our homes a battleground. And when he does so, those most affected are the children. So, friends, this is the scenario in many quarters of the globe today. And are we going to see that our master is lord over this situation? And are we going to see victories won in places of conflict? Then Dr. Job went on to say how our prayer hall is the only place in that place given to so much violence and bloodshed where these warring tribes sit together and worship. Yes. And of course, I told them just recently, 10, 15 days ago, that uh, there should not be one drop of tribal blood with all the hatred and the murder in it. Not one drop running through them because of the cross. He was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Let us pray. Loving Father, how we thank you that we come and we can come to our conquering Lord who was manifested to destroy the works of the devil, the damage done in our psyches, in our inmost personalities, to bring healing there, to bring cleansing there, Oh, that precious, precious blood which you shed for us to save us from ourselves and from our nature. What a Savior. We thank you that faith is the victory. And I pray and ask you that in situations, that confront us, 
we might exercise obedience to the word of God and faith and overcome and not go under. Please, Lord, this world has to see that our Savior's words are as true today as they ever have been. Peace I give to you. My peace give I unto you. Not as the world giveth. So, Lord, your peace. Let it be seen and manifested. And those around us certainly will want this great peace. We ask this in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. You know, I had to meet one of the top officials recently in uh, his office. The head of the Metropolitan uh, Building Authority. He had to give us an okay for certain construction, which happens to be a rather new thing for the city of Madras. And I found, as I, I did not know, that he was a Muslim. Anyway, when I did see him, I explained to him a few things, including how, in the course of our service, I see officials putting their conscience right. And I told him of one of those officials who had lied to the government that he was a matriculate or passed school and obtained and been promoted to a really high position. And when he heard the word of God, he saw how crooked he was. So he went back to the government and said, Here, I did not disclose the fact that I did not pass even my seventh grade. That's seventh standard class. And... Uh, when I told him one or two of these things, the Muslim replied, the official replied, it must be very satisfying to see some of these things. Well, I said, yes, indeed. Of course, it was an official interview. I could not speak at length. Sometimes, of course, they just drop their work and listen. You know, they are beset by these things on a daily basis and hardly know how to figure things out because they are contending with a sea of lies. You know, as people uh, apply for all kinds of benefits, you know, one of the things that did happen after the great last big war in Europe, the claims that were made, fictitious claims of losses, and the government did not know in many cases, they were cheated. And some of these people, when they heard the word of God, 
they were very troubled. There were so many troubled people. As an aftermath of the last war. And some of them could not recover. I went to pray for a particular person who could not stay still. He was just pacing the room. He just did not want me there. There was something which made my very presence so repulsive to him. You know, the conflict which is there between darkness and light. I must say, however, I could not help him. He would not receive help. And he died in that condition. So troubled. And that's only one case. I wonder how many such cases. So this society today is throwing up any number of wrecked lives, derelict lives. And in the midst of that, we have the cross. Now let us turn again to 1 Corinthians 4 chapter, please. The first verse, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Who can find a faithful man? I think faithfulness is a quality which is somewhat alien to our nature. It's not something that comes naturally. A steward is one who is entrusted with certain responsibilities and he is answerable to his master. Now, you know that personal accountability was resisted right from the Garden of Eden. Adam, where are you? Did you eat of that forbidden fruit? Does he take any personal responsibility for his sin? No. The woman whom thou gavest me. You know, it's just the same thing all over again, even to this day. Men who don't take any personal responsibility for their actions. You know, they don't even see that the quirks in their nature, the crotchets in their personality are so damaging to their children. They don't say, hey, this child is like this because of me. I see nothing but a reflection of myself in the irresponsibility which is in this child. You know, my dear friends, uh, learning disability. You know, one of my grandchildren and uh, the parents, especially the mother, thought this must be autism. The boy pays no attention when he is called. No attention. So Lily and I started praying. And here was the mother reading up everything on this subject. Learning disability. 
I said, look, the fellow is perfectly normal. If anything is too smart, <laughs> that's his problem. I can see that he's just too smart. So, what did a little time passed? Oh, he is not able to speak. This is not normal. Let me tell you, my dear friends, he not only speaks but expresses himself so wonderfully. Now, so much depends upon the parents. You know, we have got all these psychological phrases of today which are very nice little hangers on the wall. We can fix the trouble or identify it and put it on the right hook or the hanger and say, oh, I, there's nothing I can do. But let me tell you how wonderful it is when a father and a mother can humble themselves. That's the whole snag. You know, can't humble oneself. Can't take any personal responsibility. Now in the second generation, this problem of accountability got much greater. Just in the second generation. You know, Cain, where is your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? I know not. See? The woman whom thou gavest has now come to the same kind of attitude. No accountability. There should be no fear to meet the world anywhere, on any terms. When you are a faithful steward, let us pray. Lord, it's not make-believe that we want. We do not want to just assume a positional kind of situation where we say, I am walking in the heavenly places in Christ. I am seated, seated in the heavenly places in Christ. And actually, in daily life, to be found squatting in the squalor of the world. We do not want to, to carry on and expect the world to recognize a flawless product in us. No loving Father. We want to be real. We want to be true. My Savior died for me. And he cried, it is finished. The travail of Calvary has brought forth a perfect salvation for even a wretch like me. Yes, Lord, this is what we want to testify to and bear witness to. So help us. In Jesus' holy name, amen.